Hi guys, it's Jeff. Hope you're doing well uh, and you're uh, staying safe, practicing your uh, social distancing in these times. Uh, going a little stir crazy myself, and uh, but with uh, a little bit of time on my hands, I thought I'd come out to the uh, out to the shop and uh, try to work on something that uh, always brings me joy, and that's uh, these little uh, portable stoves and bushcraft uh, bushcraft stoves and and uh, bush pots and so on. This is a, a cardboard template. Uh, I was really inspired with the, uh, uh, I think it's called the, the Vita Grill or the Vita Stove. Uh, just a one piece stove. This is a cardboard mock up of, uh, of a plan that I was using where it's, it's structurally strong and quick to deploy and then you're ready to, uh, to uh, operate it. And this is a template uh, that I'm trying to build as a rocket stove. And then it closes all up and inside you store uh, these are the grates that come off, but inside you store your pot or kettle. But quickly, it just kind of deploys out from stationary in your pack to down. This is a supporting leg and uh, vent holes in those in the bottom, and then the uh, kind of the ramp feeder here uh, for your for your twigs. So that's uh, I've always liked the twig stoves. That's what I was <laughs> trying to say. Uh, so today, I found a bunch of these. Uh, albeit galvanized flashing uh, I don't know what gauge they are they're pretty pretty durable but I've got a bunch of these laying around and I thought uh, of trying to assemble them with some rivets and see if I can make uh, one of these twig stoves uh, one piece twig stove and uh, see how it turns out so I threw on the camera and uh, let's get into it see what happens Hi guys, welcome back. Jeff Allen off the Green Iron. And then just uh, take your rivet gun. I'm not sure what size of uh, rivets these are. Put it in there. Just like that. And then I like to pound uh, pound the rivet flat on the back side. And we can use our little anvil here and tap that flat. So there we go, we've got two riveted. The one side riveted, we have to do the other side. And uh, I'm just gonna hold off on that right now just in case I have to take it apart. So with this design, I had it pivoting right against the back. You can see that. So what I have to do now is decide how to cut away this, this lip on the outside of one of these boxes. Make it work the same as this one.
Okay, we've got uh, our two boxes, and we're going to get them kind of assembled like this. But I'm still working on the idea of how to what spot I can have these and have them pivot open. So that's okay. So what's next now is I've got the two two pieces here, and I'm just debating on inside where the pivot point's going to be and from there I'm thinking about blocking off blocking off the front like this so just piecing it putting a piece across the bottom so when it pivots it only comes down so far so that's what I'm working on right now and I'm not sure how it's going to be. So I'm going to make a little two inch uh, flange on the bottom and then uh, rivet it to the front. And these are just your tin, tin snips. All these edges are pretty rough. We're going to have to. Uh, Run some sandpaper or hit it with the uh, the grinder, the buffing wheel later. So we'll take two inches, mark it, and then try to cut a straight line. River that together. Just the same as before, I'm going to use half the number of rivets just in case I have to take it apart. I don't have a lot of rivets in stock. So. pieces there there's that flange and we're going to put it on the inside and then just rivet some uh, a couple of holes across the bottom to hold it in place just like that so like that across the bottom and again I'm not going to uh, put all the rivets in just yet just till I make sure it all fits together there we go we've cut out two of those matching pieces that's uh, just left over uh, from this bottom piece and we're going to put those together and uh, they are exactly they fit right over top of this four by four piece of uh, wood and it really works well to hold things uh, kind of in place dimensionally left and right there's my lucky nail is things all in alignment hammer hit hammer in and mark it out.
drilling through something into a wooden block, it uh, it really eliminates a lot of this blowout on the holes on the back side. But I do like to pound those flat. Okay, let's rivet this together. Until I know again that everything's going to work, I only uh, <coughs> I just kitty corner these rivets and use two, and then I can come back later and add the rest. Okay, there's the rivets sitting up a little proud, so we're going to turn them flat. go inside or outside. There it goes, there's the, the hole. And when we get this put on, this is our, we drop this down over it, that'll be our feeder for our twigs. I'll have to figure out that angle in a minute, but uh, we're going to get this mounted first. Okay. So I contemplated making this, uh, fastening this on the front as one secure piece. The other option is to cut little slits where this sits down over top of my hinge. But my latest idea to kind of hold all this together but make it all detachable was slit this corner and fold down this outside edge so it created a, a groove or a trough. So if I fold it, fold it over like this, that uh, then it, it'll sit down on the top edge and keep everything together. So I'm going to try that in hopes that I don't mess up this piece. So what do we need? I'm going to come down roughly uh, three-eighths, half an inch, three-eighths, snip, I'm going back now, and snip. I need a straight edge to fold that over. Okay, I went over to the uh, the vise and bent those two over there. That one's a little... Don't cut towards your kids. There we go. Let's open them up a little bit. So when I pack this up, this could all pack down inside itself, pull itself out, over top, over top, and with that, get on there. And I would always have my multi-tool to tap that down in the field. Maybe, I don't know if I like it yet. Because now I have this, this edge here that's going to eliminate my pot or my kettle from sitting flat on there. Um, I might have to bend that one over too. So there is, uh, in essence, our uh, twig stove open front on it. But I do like the idea of this having this this uh, this shoot. Okay. Hmm. So now 
we need to figure out the angle that that's going to sit at and why. What angle do I need for that? And how, what do I do with these top pieces here? Because they're going to get interfere with my pot. Um, 45. Let's see, figure that out. Where would 45 degrees come? Straight across there. And if I can took this edge and cut it straight off, I folded it down, I suppose. This is all the fun. This is the fun part of uh, building stuff is all the, the figuring out. I don't have uh, any fancy tools right now. I'm not using um, <clears throat> anything but my own ingenuity and my own own plan. And that's why I start the camera early, just so I know it's it's uh, it's running, and uh, you can see me go through the problem solving stage rather than just commercially build something so okay so uh just gone around the outside of the box and reinforced all the the edges with rivets again right now comes uh comes apart like that and that can be all stored in there but gives you that space to uh, also lay down something inside or syrup and kind of goes together like this over the outside and just drops into those ridges and I bent this top edge down and so there's the open face and right now here's my my chute I'm still working on the uh, top edge but it's going to close close in over top of that opening something like so you can see the chute down in there and what I found was uh, one of the old uh, the end cuts off one of my uh, grills so it's oven safe heat safe and I think I'm going to put a hole here and put this through and that's going to act as the pivot but also the piece that you can lose if you're not careful So in the event that I want to take it apart, it all kind of collapse down on itself, like so. So you can put whatever in here, and then it comes apart. This piece first. I want to reduce the what I call the the fiddle factor. There's not so there's not a lot of moving parts. So you know again I haven't decided not to make that permanent, and um, I'll have to figure out a great system here too. But and then this this piece here, how how it's going to pivot. So that's my next next task is to figure out how that's going to pivot from an opposed position to an open position. So right now these two edges just just kind of push together and I'm not sure if I'm super fond of that. And then inside it almost creates uh, a bit of a lip there if I'm not careful for the twigs to get hung up on. So I think if I cut these seams open on both sides and let it sit down inside it would create a bit of a ramp and also move this pivot point closer to the back. So I might try to do that. Hopefully I don't wreck it. So we're gonna start with uh, three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch on both sides. Here we go. Okay, I think I figured it out. Uh, cut and bent a flange on the bottom of the chute. 
And now with it together and some slits on the side, that chute overlaps and drops down into the hole. And it provides that little ramp inside for the twigs. So now the moment of truth, where to put the hinge, and then we can figure out how the how the chute's going to hold up and how this is all going to come together. With the little ramp in there, it also gives this little groove for airflow, and I think that would be great to uh, kind of drive the the rocket stove air intake right like that. It doesn't have to be there, but I'm going to leave it leave it open like that. Okay, moment of truth. Make okay, here it is so far. And folds up there. I just put screws in there for now. There's the hole in the front. And then it just cants out. There's the ramp at the bottom. There's the feed, uh, feed port for the twigs. And uh, yeah, we want to figure out how to kind of tighten all that up and how to fit this a grid on here and figure out how to do uh, what to do with that so, so we uh peened over those edges made them two uh two <coughs> angles on there so now i'll put this back together and again i'm just using uh just kind of standard wood screws for the moment just to make sure everything's fitting properly. that all collapses that's a really tight confined unit uh, it's only a rivet or two away from being completely kind of just a drop open unit hollow inside I still have to work out a grid system but you drop it open like that and nice and level pretty level across the top and on top of that is where you Put, uh, put your pot, put the handle out of the way, something like that, and uh, from this side, you'd be uh, you'd feed your sticks, feed your twigs. Twigs drop down in the hopper, in the feeder, and that's right underneath. You know, I'll have to come up with something. This is a, I think this is electrical or a, you know, electrical ring of sorts but uh, something like that could be used as the, the grill and uh, the pot would go on there like so and even with the bigger pot something with a little larger diameter <clears throat> instead of just having the, uh, the small feeder opening at the bottom like many of these twig stoves have just a little wee opening like this now with it open all the way okay I can really this is a at least a six inch diameter pot and there's still the the opening there to feed the sticks and I could have a longer sticks up there upwards of a foot long into the feeder Feeding down from the, from the side, kind of un, uninterrupted or not obstructing the uh, the actual cooking cooking surface. So I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with that. Not quite done. Um, I do think to uh, to avoid the the uh, the fiddle factor and the taking it apart and. Just putting myself at risk with the sharp edges. Uh, this drop open concept might be all I need. And uh, I'm just going to put in uh, uh, a rivet or two back back on the back side here to hold it 
hold it tight and all together and uh, figure out what I'm going to do with, uh, with uh, a grid of swords next. Whether I do something like that or cut the, uh, the little wedges in there for the, uh, the crisscross grates. We'll have to uh, have to see what I decide, but uh, yeah. So that's been uh, that's been a nice little build. Hopefully, uh, if I have time mm -hmm. tomorrow, being uh, being nice, I'll uh, I'll give it a try and add that on to the uh, the end of this video. So what I did uh, just now, I uh, made a little base for it and tapped it in, and it only went in there a quarter of an inch on some sides. So I think I, I wanted a bottom to a protected ground and I'm not really comfortable that's going to stay in. It's not riveted in there so I might take these little angle brackets and uh, put a couple of them on the side just to, to beef it up so it doesn't, doesn't fall out. Certainly one or two of them and uh, that should be enough support for the bottom to stay on. Well, we've gone from a uh, cardboard prototype to uh, kind of a finished finished product. Uh, pretty happy with it. I always uh, I thought about it this after where you could actually load the twigs back there and this would create a windshield uh, for a windy day. I uh, took this, oh, whatever that might have been, electrical flange of some sort and mounted it on there with rivets. And there's the, the hopper. And uh, I also put uh, some holes around the, uh, the base for inlet for air. Let the air get at the coals. And sometimes in a rocket stove, it's got the, the two layers here. I haven't done that. Uh, I don't know if I'll, I'll bother with this design, but. There we go, and if it wasn't so windy right now, we'd get outside and uh, try it, but that'll be in an upcoming video, perhaps my next video, I'll uh, compare uh, a lot of my builds that I've made with uh, kind of the homemade twig stove idea, and uh, share with you a number of those builds. Well, as a review, I had uh, a lot of these metal, a number of these metal, pieces of metal flashings, these right angle galvanized flashings and uh, I don't know I think I have one two three four five six seven seven of these angles and probably about 15 20 rivets and here is my one piece twig stove with a hopper you can see it down there and uh, other than kind of taking care of some sharp edges um, it's uh, it's good to go and hopefully we'll have a, have a pot on here tomorrow and uh, give it a good, good give it a good test so Jeff Allen off the grid iron thanks for watching if you haven't already click like subscribe and share join me in my channel and all my bushcraft adventures whether it be at home in my garage building bushcraft gear or out in the woods testing it and, and uh, trying things out there until next time Jeff Allen off the grid iron thanks for watching enjoy your doors Thank you.